Hi, in this video we will look into one uh, method for reinforcement learning called policy gradient uh, method. So uh, let's have a quick review of what the RL agent is and uh, uh, what it requires to formulate a problem. So in case of the um, reinforcement learning, we um, look into doing the dynamic programming with rewards and penalties as we have said this. Um, the importantly, we are exploring the policy based on the observations that we have and then uh, based on the observations, state of the environment, we look into giving the action set. And of course, um, uh, once the action is given, what is the reward and what is the whether the action was good or bad, depending upon that, we come up with a reward um, function to uh, to say that okay, this action was good or bad. So we will have to consider what is the environment. We will have to give the answer what my RL agent is doing, and of course, since this is policy uh, based policy gradient based method we will look into having some kind of a policy update uh, method over here. And this is definitely as the name suggests, it is going to be a gradient based method. Uh, we will have to say what is the state of the environment and what are our actions uh, based on which uh, we will say okay, uh, since these were the observations, you have taken this action, whether it is a good or bad action that is described by my reward function. All right. And then we looked into understanding the training phase, uh, which had two terms called policy and policy and sorry, uh, uh, which had two terms, actor and critic. The actor responsibility was to take actions based on the observations and the state, uh, mainly the state of the environment, and keep refining the policy, whereas the critic will evaluate the actions. All right. So when we are doing um, uh, the policy uh, refinement, that time we'll say, okay, we had this particular trajectory which went from, which took um, certain states and certain action, state and action pairs. Now when the state and action pairs were considered, we had followed certain policy, but we'll, uh, so that is what my theta uh, parameter is based on which uh, we'll consider okay out of all these theta parameters, theta values, uh, which policy is going giving me the good answer or good re good set of rewards, and that's what is going to be giving me the optimized policy answer. Whereas critic will look into saying that okay now I have the um, cumulative rewards starting from a particular state to the final uh, state, uh, what is the value that it creates while taking that particular trajectory or that particular, um, that particular um, the transition of states which had happened because of the actions and it will evaluate and give a particular value to it based on which it will say okay this policy needs to be updated or this policy needs to be having some kind of, what kind of changes it will require in order to reach to the optimal. Uh, policy levels. And so this critic network has a parameter W that we will consider. All right. So the policy gradient um, method, what is what it has is of course we are looking into the environment and this policy gradient method is to certain extent at a particular uh, training phase, it will give a best action to be given, all right, to the environment. Now. How is it doing? It has a policy network which takes the state uh, as an input and calculates the action probabilities. Out of these action probabilities, the multiple action probabilities that it has, it will select the best action and ask the environment to act on. Uh, now when I have to update the policy, what we will do is we will take the log of the probabilities just to make sure our um, uh, probabilities are normalized to certain extent. And then we will consider the environment to give me the reward uh, since we have defined the reward function and the environment is going to give me the new state. And there comes the reward function or, um, um, or the calculations of uh, the value functions which the critic is doing. Um, 
this particular reward and the log probabilities that we have is going to give me the idea where should I look forward for updating the policy. So it is to certain extent giving me the gradient value, uh, gradient whether I should go in this particular direction to, uh, to consider the policy update or that one uh, in order to reach to an optimal value. So in summary, the policy network will serve as the direct representation of a policy. So this, these are all um, uh, networks, uh, deep Q networks and what, what not, neural networks. Uh, these neural networks will output action probabilities as we said given a state and this particular algorithm, this reinforcing algorithm will use this back propagation or the gradient ascent for the policy updates, all right. Um, uh, this is this is what is more or less um, um, high level uh, way of understanding the prop policy gradient methods. There are many many different variants of it which will um, which which uh, talks about how to calculate the action probabilities and how to do the this particular back propagation. And of course, how do I have different kind of critic networks and so on. So. The underlying challenge only in the policy gradient method is the high variance from returns. So when we do this particular back propagation, so this is based on individual um, updates that we are taking care of. Now these updates, um, this particular update whether this um, action was good or bad uh, based on which the reward has been coming up this particular value that is being fed back to the policy network can have a bias. Bias as in depending upon my, what was my previous value and this new value that it is receiving as an input should have some normalization, all right. So they should have some common basis and this particular return will have a very high variance if I am not normalizing it and I am considering a very large range of values to be considered. So um, how do we mitigate this challenge? We can design a baseline network to estimate of the expected actual returns. Finally, um, uh, there is going to be some idea on how, the, how these particular uh, input values to the, uh, the, this particular feedback that we are calling it given to the policy network for the, for the updates are going to vary. And this will, will have say okay this is go going to be my values and this network will ba basically decide um, uh, will not introduce, will make sure that it will not, it should not introduce any bias into the policy gradient, okay. Um, quick idea about um, how we implemented it and there is a, uh, we, are supply, we are giving you a set of code which will talk about okay we have this actor network given by uh, these many layers and uh, mostly ReLU layer, layers. Uh, this is how the network has been created. Similarly, critic network is a very straight uh, uh, network. The parameters to be given here is um, uh, 0 0.05, the, the way we have created and got the outputs which, uh, shown in, which were shown in the previous video. Uh, is sample time, we fix sample time to 0 0.05, discount factor to something, critic learning rate, rate and the actor le optimizer uh, learning rate. So those of, those, of them, those of them are, okay, here um, a small correction, this is minus 4 and this is minus 4. These are very small values by which uh, the policy gradients are, uh, the gradients are being, uh, being uh, moved towards the optimal value and that sets the learning rate. The idea here is to give you an I give you a gist of what all parameters require are required to uh, set this particular um, RL network based or uh, this RL, RL based methodology to work and so on. So these are more or less like um, 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 the parameters which play around but the values that vary are of this particular order is what the idea behind giving uh, these numbers. Interestingly now when we look into this policy gradient based training, 
uh, we will continue this particular training phase and to certain extent uh, what we have to consider is what is the average reward that we are getting uh, over the multiple episodes. So we will keep creating the training data and this particular training data will be run over multiple, ep multiple episodes. And this episodes, these number of episodes, individual episode is making sure that my average reward is to certain extent is getting saturated. Now even, even if I be, go beyond more number of episodes, this training data, this average reward is not um, changing that much. And that's where we will say, okay, this is how my network is trained now and let's look into applying it into uh, the actual system. Uh, we have applied into the same simulation environment and showed the results last time. Our testing results showed that the vertical stabilization of the inverted pendulum from different initial states, um, even with noise, is able to create this. Because when we generated um, the da training data, we had already considered some sources of noise and, um, and some different initial conditions for which this network was trained. Uh, we will quickly look into what this particular code structure is. Uh, you can consider that uh, reading this particular readme.txt. Read uh, at the same time, there are three files, pendulum environment file, uh, this test, test file and the training environment file. All right. So this readme file gives you the idea of what each particular file is about. And then how do we use this particular, um, use these um, uh, files? First of all, we'll have to consider training the environment. So we'll run this train underscore environment underscore pg dot m. And then we'll do the uh, testing part by running this test, test underscore pg file. All right, um, wish you all the best. And please do try running these files these particular MATLAB files and change a little bit the way we did made changes into removing the uh, talk term into the reward function and um, we could see that the, uh, mag the maximum talk is increasing by value from plus minus 10 with uh, the range of the torques have changed from plus minus 10 units to plus minus 50 units. All right, thank you so much.